terms of media coverage, the Mumbai massacre was a huge hit. It gave the terrorists the attention they craved. The attack received saturation coverage in the world's media within minutes of the first shots being fired. In almost pornographic detail, readers, listeners and TV viewers were dished up with details revealing harrowing scenes, stories of pools of blood where people had died, hotels ablaze, crack-shot Indian Army snipers firing at distant targets, and even blurry CCTV images of the attackers. Survivors talked live on TV how certain nationalities had been identified by their passports and taken away for execution. The audience was global, gripped by every awful detail of the drama which unfolded live before their eyes. Now that the dead are buried and the questions are being asked, there are those in the media who are beginning to question the cult of fame, where even criminals and merchants of terror begin to crave media attention. Today's agenda asks the question, is the media creating celebrity terrorism? Who remembers the Bader Meinhof gang? Well, Hollywood has turned the German terror group's activities into a movie, revealing arson attacks, bank raids and kidnappings, prompting one reviewer to say, who knew that terrorists were so sexy? So, are we in an age where terrorism is being glamorized, helping us through this moral maze? Our four distinguished guests, starting with award-winning film director Ken Farrow, who lectures at London's Brunel, Buckinghamshire and Canterbury Universities. He specializes in political filmmaking and community activism, and one of his films, Injustice, is still banned in Britain. Next to him is Shane Greer, one of Britain's leading political commentators and executive editor of Total Politics, a monthly political lifestyle magazine read by the opinion formers. Ivor Gabber is Professor of Political Campaigning and Reporting at City University London. His main area of interest and expertise lie in the relationship between the media and the political process and often appears as an expert government witness. An accomplished author, his other research interests include developments in TV news. Ken, I'm going to come to you first. Let's cut straight to the chase. Does your industry glamorize terror? I think the answer is <coughs> yes and no. Yes in the sense that uh, the media does sometimes escalate terrorism. But the root cause of terrorism is not the media, it's social injustice and political, uh, the political will of people which is suppressed. So uh, I would say yes and no. What about uh, you, Shane? I mean, when kids are watching uh, television news unfolding, um, you know, like the Mumbai massacres, do you think it inspires some kids to think, oh, yeah, I'd love to run around with a machine gun and, and uh, that looks glamorous? I, I think it's a difficult leap to make. And, and certainly I think um, Ivor would, would have quite a bit to say on this, given sort of Northern Ireland and your experiences there. But I, I don't think that's the case. I mean, certainly I think it, if, you, if you want to, to create a piece, a documentary, a film, an advert, whatever it is you want to create that's there to inspire people to do certain things, you can do. But I don't think, generally speaking, what the media is doing is creating any kind of cult of celebrity about this kind of thing. What the media is doing is reporting on incidents and the reality is when you see innocent people being massacred by terrorists, there are very few individuals who would be inspired by that to take that action. And certainly any individuals who are further inspired by that, I, I would imagine, one would imagine, are already the kind of individuals who are interested in going down that path. Well, I, uh, I was just thinking about um, the uh, shooting in Columbine School, which then we had the film Bowling for Columbine. Mm. Uh, there, there have been quite a few shootings at schools in America but and I, Finland, bizarrely enough. But I think there's a, there's a crucial distinction. I, I'm, I'm uncomfortable, uh, which relates to that. I'm, I'm uncomfortable with the, the, word, the phrase celebrity terrorism, and I'll tell you why. I think the students who do those terrible gun shootings, mainly in the States, are doing it for a sort of black 
celebrity status, if you like. They're going through whatever personal crisis and they want to have fame, whatever. Well, I, they make videos. Yeah, before yeah. They... But, and, but they do, they, that's specifically not terrorism in the sense of, that Ken's referring to and, and in the sense that I think most people refer it to. I, I mean, I, I form this, I don't think the, the media, certainly with, with Mumbai and Northern Ireland as well, we go back to that, I think the media does glamorise. I mean, we have to remember what we're talking about when we're talking about glamorising something to create an air of glamour, to make it seem appealing, exciting, even, and certainly the media doesn't do that. The reality is the attacks in Mumbai were, were absolutely absolutely devastating, were tragic, they were a massacre, <laughs> any number of people were innocent. Do you innocent think the media were, were... conveyed that? Do you think they conveyed the full horror of... I, I don't think you, I don't think in any sense you can convey the, the full horror of those sorts of events unless unless you've actually been there and experienced them yourselves. But I think they, they, uh, the media's coverage serves to, to put the, the world in front of the, the great dangers that we do face. It, you know, in, a, in an odd way, I felt, uh, I agree with you, but in an odd way, I felt the police or the authorities helped glamorise it. I think the media are very aware that they're going to dominate the airwaves for the rest of the story. And I think they, they're, in, they're in a position days. of being, well, I know, but they're in a position of being able to, be, I, I, can I use the word generous? to give people that, put that voice. I'm sure this debate will continue in homes across the world, but our time is up for this week. Do you agree with today's guests, or do you have your own views about the media coverage of the terrorist activities we've discussed? Either way, we do want to hear from you, and here's Amit Tahuri to tell you how to get your voice heard. Thanks, Yvonne. Hello, I'm here to tell you how to get your views heard on the agenda. You can call us on 0208 728 6499. That's plus four four two zero eight seven two eight six four nine nine for international callers. If you're on the internet, you can look us up on Facebook and MySpace or email us on the agenda at presstv.com. That's the agenda at presstv.com. Well, it might be into a new year, but today's feedback shows that Palestine is still very much on everyone's mind, although we have close correspondence on the issue of the illegal settlers for the time being. The agenda show on Interpal's crisis focused everyone's attention. Safi Ahmad from King's College in London said the show prompted him to send letters of a complaint to the Islamic Bank of Britain and to Lloyd's TSB after hearing how Interpal's bank account was threatened with closure without explanation. He added, great show, it made the issue clear and simple. Veteran agenda viewer Dr. Ahmad Mustafa from Saudi Arabia added, thanks for an excellent program on banks. And an email from Donald Borsik in San Francisco read, Great program on Interpol. I thought that trying to help Palestinians would surely get one on a terrorist list and into all kinds of trouble, especially in this country. I also found the references to Islamic finances in gold and, sin and silver fascinating. It would be great to have an account in gold dinars. And Tina Hewitt from Wales says the Bank of England should step forward and give Interpol an account. It is the best solution. Seth Edwards from Washington says he would like to see an agenda show on scholars and dollars after a really heated debate broke out over the controversial meeting between Egypt's spiritual leader and Sheikh Tantawi and Israel's Shimon Peres on the Facebook comments wall. We do take your suggestions seriously, so keep them coming. We'd also be interested to know which guests you would like to see in the agenda studio in the future programs. And if you just joined us on Sky, channel 515, and want to dip into our archives to see what you've missed, it couldn't be easier. To go to our archives to see what you've been missing, simply go to our website at www.presstv.com. Click on to the programs icon, scroll down, click on the agenda icon, and there's a whole archive of shows for you to watch in your own time. Please feel free to give us suggestions for future topics. Until next time, take care and thanks for watching. Back to you, Yvonne. Thank you for that. Well, just remains for me to say a big thank you to each and every one of our guests and we'll see you all soon on the next agenda.